If you've ever played a tabletop role-playing game that is powered by the apocalypse, you are familiar with the mechanic of clocks, which represent the progress of different things in your narrative. And something I get asked a lot is, whoa, Oz, how did you make these super cool looking and easy to use clocks for your games? Well, let me show you. All right, so I am starting in a blank game on Roll20.net, and I've selected this photo icon at the top right for my personal art library tab, which is available to use for all of my games. And I've already uploaded these clocks, which I found online, but I am providing the links in the description below so that you can use them for yourself. So as you can see, I have four segment clocks, six segment, eight segment, etc. And our goal is to use Roll20's rollable token feature in order to make these into a single token that you can adjust to show different faces. So we're going to click this three dot three line icon next to the cogwheel, which brings up your collections. And down here on rollable tables, click add. And then here where it says new table, click that to bring up this menu. Let's rename it to clock. Uncheck players can roll from table. You don't want them able to roll randomly on these because you as the GM want to have precise control over these. So let's click add item. We'll rename this 4-0, four, four being the number of segments the clock is and zero being the number of segments filled in. This is a personal naming convention. You can name it whatever you want, uh, but go to your art library and drag in the four clock with zero segments filled in and hit save changes. And now we're going to rinse and repeat for all of the possible segments. Something I used to do is make different rollable tokens for each clock. So a four segment and a six segment clock and an eight segment clock uh, would be different tokens. But then I realized that we can just have them all available in the same single token. So we're only ever dealing with the one clock. And there we go. We have all our clock faces loaded in. Make sure to hit save changes. So now when you go to the collection tab, you can go to rollable tables at any time to your clock and select token and voila, it's added to your table. To adjust your clock, right click it and you should see a new menu option called multi-sided. Select choose side and now you have this nifty sliding bar that lets you scroll through all of the options for your clock. And since we put them all on the same token, you can make a four segment clock, a six segment clock, eight segment clock, 12 segment clock, and start filling in as the narrative demands. You can name your clocks too. Right click and select the cogwheel. Check mark show nameplate. If you want the players to see it too, go to the advanced tab and under player permissions, check name C. Otherwise only you can see it, which is great for setting up mysterious clocks that your players can watch fill up and freak out over. Back in the basic tab, name it whatever you like to represent the clock. Hit save changes and there you go. If you want to be fancy and create your own visual aesthetic look, you can add graphics around the clock and use the Roll20 text tool instead. You can also adjust the background colors of your table, add the game's logo, or if you want to be real pro, make an entire dashboard for your game. This is my dashboard for Blades in the Dark, where I've put a reference guide to the game's rules on a thematic image and have clocks available to be filled in as needed. And there you have it. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, share it with your game masters, and let me know in the comments below if you have any tips or tricks I might have missed. You can also join our Discord at shadowcasters.network slash Discord for our growing community of tabletop deep divers, and also follow me on Twitter at Ozkore, O-Z-Z-K-O-R-E. Thanks for watching.